Good evening, I'm David Schuster. Keith Olbermann has the night off. Trying to split the difference runs the risk of pleasing no one. President Obama having released the Bush torture memos, but having promised immunity for likely rank-and-file torturers. Now, in our fifth story on the countdown, the president is coming under criticism from former Bush officials who accuse him of weakening national security by merely releasing those damning memos. Meanwhile, today it became even more evident that President Bush knew or should have known that his administration employed torture even while he was saying, we do not torture. President Obama today was attending the 34 Nation Summit of the Americas in Trinidad, while two former Bush administration officials pummeled his decision to release those four legal memos authored by Mr. Bush's Department of Justice. The memos which painstakingly attempt to bring various torture tactics, most notably waterboarding, under the Bush administration's notion of legal. Former CIA Director Michael Hayden and former Attorney General Michael Mukasey in a Wall Street Journal op-ed asserting that President Obama was wrong to release the memos, that doing so prevents the current and every future president from using those so-called enhanced techniques ever again, but also as if conceding potential culpability, Mr. Hayden and Mr. Mukasey claimed that these techniques were rarely used. The techniques themselves were used selectively against only a small number of hardcore prisoners who successfully resisted other forms of interrogation, and then only with the explicit authorization of the director of the CIA. But even that claim is contradicted by the torture memos. Recall that three of the four memos were authored by Mr. Bush's Justice Department in 2005 in response to a request for legal advice from a senior CIA official. A footnote to one of the memos clearly states that, quote, in some cases, the waterboard was used with far greater frequency than initially indicated and also in a different manner. And there's more has resulted in a number of changes in the application of the waterboard, including limits on the frequency and cumulative use of the technique. Translation, for some period of time, possibly for much of the three-year period from 9-11 attacks until the 2005 memos, limitations on the manner of waterboarding were not in place. And even after waterboarding was metaphorically bathed in the Bush Justice Department's attempt to make it look legal, there is no compelling reason to believe it was anything but torture. And in fact, another footnote in one of those memos acknowledges that as a starting point, waterboarding constitutes the legal definition of torture. But then President Bush repeatedly said that the United States does not torture. We're finding terrorists and bringing them to justice. We are gathering information about where the terrorists may be hiding. We are trying to disrupt their plots and plans. Anything we do to that effort, to that end, in this effort, any activity we conduct is within the law. We do not torture. Let's call in George Washington University law professor and a constitutional law expert, Jonathan Turley. And Jonathan, good evening. Good evening, David. Let's begin with a, another criticism of President Obama's release of these memos, and this one is from an unnamed former Bush administration official, quoting, it's damaging because these are techniques that work, and by Obama's action today, we are telling the terrorists what they are. We have laid it out for our enemies. Publicizing the techniques does grave damage to our national security by ensuring they can never be used again, even in a ticking time bomb scenario. Isn't that criticism open to at least three rebuttals? I mean, first of all, torture does not work. Second, the point is not to use these techniques ever again. And third, the enemy's not gaining any relevant information it didn't already possess. Well, it's a perfectly bizarre defense. I mean, first of all, let's start out with a position. You're not allowed to make this choice. This is a war crime. You can't say, yeah, it's a war crime, but, you know, it, it, it's effective in some regards. You're not allowed to use it. But more importantly, I would be really surprised if there's any dirty bomber out there uh, who's just been shocked to know that he might be slapped or forced into a wall or waterboarded. All of those things were well known. Detainees have talked about their treatment uh, by U.S. Uh, officials. Uh, so there's nothing here that we didn't know before. What is new 
is the legal analysis. Most of this is legal analysis. And what I'm surprised by the Obama administration is they haven't looked at people like uh, the NSC staffer, Mr. Brennan, or CIA director Panetta, and said, look, you just said that this was filled with national security information. All this stuff has been released for the most part. What it is mainly composed of is the legal arguments that are fallacious, that are wrong. And the only reason you were withholding this is to avoid accountability. And that's one of the reasons the Obama administration came out at the same time and said, don't worry, anyone who committed torture won't be hearing from us. Because the real purpose in claiming national security uh, concerns was to protect these people from being held accountable for a well-defined, premeditated war crime. Given that the Obama administration may have left the door open to prosecuting or at least investigating those in the Bush administration who created this policy, is there obvious motivation behind former Bush administration officials lashing out? Oh, there most certainly is. This is this is truly an otherworldly scene where you have people like Cheney and others who have been rightly accused of war crimes uh, out there, you know, basically defending themselves. The reason this conversation, this bizarre dialogue is going on is because President Obama is preventing the appointment of a special prosecutor. They have not done the most obvious thing. There's no question there's credible arguments of war crimes here. Now, maybe Vice President Cheney and President Bush have defenses. That's what the rule of law is about. You appoint a professional prosecutor who's not going to engage in retribution or partisan politics, and he or she looks at the law and decides if there's a case here. Quite frankly, there's no question, in my view, that there's a credible case of war crimes. President Obama himself is called waterboarding torture. Torture is a well-defined war crime, and we have prosecuted people for this specific violation. Well, since we didn't have you here yesterday, uh, tell us what uh, was and is your reaction to the president effectively granting immunity to those interrogators who acted on the legal advice of these Department of Justice memos? Well, this is the first attorney general in the history of the United States of America that has said that he will not investigate people accused of the war crime of torture. They don't rule out uh, the people who ordered the war crime. But this is the first time in the history of this republic that an attorney general has said, I'm not going to investigate. It reverses the precedent we created at Nuremberg. Not only did we reject the just following orders claim, but we actually prosecuted Nazi judges who rendered opinions that were obviously wrong and obviously violations of human rights. Now, none of us really were thinking that we would prosecute or grab these low-lying fruits, that is to try to grab the torturers and prosecute them. But what, what Holder just did is made it very difficult if we do have an investigation. One of the ways you get cooperation is the agreement not to prosecute. He's basically telling all these people, you may have committed torture, you may have committed a war crime, but you're not going to hear from us. Yeah, it's like trying to build a house by essentially not having a foundation to build on top of that. In any case, uh, Jonathan um, Turley, uh, George Washington University law professor. Thanks as always, Jonathan. We appreciate it. Thanks, David.